Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Artist Focus from Out of Sight. Uh, and uh, we are coming to you from several locations, uh, one being um, uh, where this is being broadcast from is actually in Scotland. I'm in Edmonton, Canada, and my guest, John Beaumet, is in Victoria in British Columbia. And Out of Sight, is operated outside out of Chicago. So uh, today we've got John Bome with us for the hour, which is terrific. And we're gonna be looking at some of his work over, over the last 30 years. And we're also gonna be looking for you to add your comments uh, into the chat um, on the different platforms that we are doing. And you can also put your questions there. And at the very end, we're going to save some time for questions. So I want to I want to begin just by doing a land acknowledgement um, for Out of Sight. And Out of Sight, this broadcast has been brought to you from, it's based in Chicago, from Out of Sight, the ancestral lands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, and the Patawami. And I as I said, was coming from you from Edmonton, which is actually Treaty 6 territory. And uh, it's a traditional gathering place of diverse Indigenous people, including the Cree, the Blackfoot, the Métis, the Nakota Sioux, the Iroquois, the Dene, the Ojibwe, the Salt, the Salt Sioux, and the Anishinaabe and Inuit people. And um, John, if you can do your land acknowledgement from Hello. Victoria... Thank you very much, Bo. I just like to say that I'm super grateful, and I just like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people of the Great Songhees and uh, Esquimalt Nation. Uh, and I just happen to be on some very, very you know, significant land where the Transformer Rock was right here. One of the three Transformers of British Columbia is right up the water. It's very important land that uh, that I am seated on, and I'm really fortunate to be here and look at the lovely birds and watch the ancestors go by in, in, the, in the form of foam. So it's a really, really important land, and I'm grateful to be here. And I'd like to acknowledge the caregivers of those lands for millennia. Great. Um, so just to be able to introduce John, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his, his background. Um, so he identifies as a cisgender white male of German Scottish heritage in Victoria, B.C. Uh, he's weaned in the Kuma, Kumawa territories in the, I may be pronouncing these wrong, so I, I do apologize. <laughs> Kumiaya. Kumiaya. Kumiaya territories in the Wind and Sea? Wind and Sea, yeah. Wind and Sea of La Jolla, California. Educated through boarding schools, very good, and graduated from Army and Navy Academy. Receiving his visual arts diploma from the Camson, Camson College, uh, a bachelor's degree from and as valedictorian from Emily Carr University of Art and Design, and a master's degree from the University of Victoria, where he now resides. John uh, is not constrained by any specific mode and utilizes integrated approaches to realize his work. He has been exhibiting and presenting artwork for over 30 years and continues to have exhibitions and screenings and participate in festivals across Canada, Australia, the Americas, the United Kingdom, Europe, and China. John is an artist and educator teaching performance arts, ceramics, and sculpture as a continuing faculty of the Visual Arts Department at Kamasan College. There we are. 
Okay. Lovely to have you, John. Oh, thank you very much, Bo. Terrific. Um, we, we've known each other for, for a few years. Yes. And uh, have chatted in various locations around the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now, we, now we get to do it virtually, which is terrific. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to begin sort of, we'll, we'll do this in a couple of parts. So uh, we're going to talk about your earlier work. And we do have an example of that, uh, of three pieces, and 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 then have a bit of a discussion about that work. Then we're going to go into this the surf uh, project that you did in various locations, and then go deep into a focus onto those onto that particular work, um, and then we'll open it up to questions. Okay, terrific. I feel like I'm on a game show right now. <laughs> Okay, let's spin the wheel. <laughs> um, okay, well, how about if we if we do you want to give any intro into the into the video, or we just um, launch right in there? No, these uh, these early works were back when I was in school in um, the nine early nineties. So when I was first started doing work around, so the quality of them they're okay. They've been dubbed from television to VHS from VHS to DVD, from DVD to digital. So they've gone through a whole iteration. So some of them are quite old and broken down. So I just want to give you a little runner that it's not the high HD. that We've we're, all been there. We've come, we've come to expect. <laughs> okay, great. Um, well, let's run, let's run the video. It's about five minutes. And, uh, and that will give a good sampling of, of your earlier work. Feel free to put questions in. Mm -hmm. Busy intersection, feeling that all eyes were on you, watching, waiting, sizing you up, checking you out. Well, videographer Jay Meyer has found a Vancouver performance artist who's watching back. The results are unpredictable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Main and Fifth in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And today we'll be featuring John Beaumet, performance artist. I'm just trying to let people, when they're in the car, think about, uh, about when they're looking at people and that they can look at you as well. You know what I mean? Because most people sit in the car and then the world is there and they could be picking their nose or whatever. And, and they don't really realize that. But when, when, you're, when you're being scrutinized and you're in your car by some uh, pedestrian, it plays off that power struggle. Yeah. And, and I'm finding it to be fascinating, the reaction that you get. Do people like you invading their space? I found they're, they're, they're generally innocuous to it. They, they don't realize it until later on, and I get a really sense that there's a depth of feeling when they, when they realize what I, when I look into their car and look into their eyes. And then they realize that there's something different. This isn't just actually a stop, somebody crossing a stop walk. It's actually something happening that's different. It's more than just crossing the street. Yes. When you do something like this, you're actually you're actually circumventing uh, and the power that one one gets in an, in a in an automobile. You're stopping tons and tons of traffic to uh, to cross the street. Next show, John. Friday, noon to twelve, Main and Fifth, right here, Vancouver, BC. Canada, but it doesn't matter where you are. Could be anywhere, anywhere. North America. Thank you very much, John. I'm Jay Myris in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Like we said, for facts. This is the first year I've participated in the uh, Moss Street painting. Well, I'm an interdisciplinary artist generally, but I'm, this piece happens to be performance art. I'm actually making good time. I'm sweeping quite uh, briskly. Uh, working artist and 
artist working. Vancouver performance artist John Bome tends to take a deeper look into our everyday routines. The Church of Cash is one such piece. If you have a bank card, you might want to check this out. Uh, welcome to Maine and 2nd, Vancouver, BC, Canada, home of a certain bank machine and home to the Church of Cash and performance artist John Bome. Welcome. Everybody, at least in North America, and I know all over the world, there are bank machines just like this one. Mm -hmm. And everybody can relate to exactly what I'm doing, but it's, it's, like, it's like breathing. You, you, you do it, but it doesn't really, uh, it's not really a, a ritualized act. What I've done here is I've ritualized the act, and by doing that, I bring more awareness into what you do every time you go to that inner act, and every time you pay with your, with your plastic money card, you're actually taking part of an age-old ritual, not unlike the confessional in the Christian religion. your special code and every time you pay with that card you are partaking in a ritual unconsciously unconsciously and i hope through this that people are more aware of the ritual that they're taking part in to go on each and every day, hundreds and thousands of times a day. <laughs> I love, I love that he says thank you at the end. <laughs> when you're, when he, when it's his turn. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of fun, fun stuff happening there. Yeah. Um, so what, what was touching me with those is about how you're trying to bring awareness to, to moments and to make the invisible visible, whether it's, you know, the looking at people in the car or in the case of, of the last one of what is it that we're actually doing. And that, those were the early days of, of Interact at that time. And look at how many times we've done it since. Um, so I wonder if you could speak a little bit about your desire back then to, to bring awareness to everyday actions. Um, well, I was uh, reading with the Situationist Society of the Spectacle and how every, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, every moment, you know, is, is a is a beautiful spectacle. And then I was thinking, well, you know, crossing the street, I was living on Main Street in Vancouver. And, uh, you know, what would you do? And I had done it before, just as a lark, on, you know, streets that just have like a stoplight and there's no cross streets. And you're like, why is there a stoplight there? <laughs> <laughs> stop cars and they people would get really pissed off and, and i thought well maybe i could do it during a, an entire week at the same time and uh and then bring awareness to that and then through that i learned that a lot of people um suzanne lacy and a couple of people were telling me about the piece they did in prisons and a lot of female prisons um a lot of them um, sexual abuse a lot of violence happens within vehicles because they're confined spaces and i didn't know that and doing it so as a sort of a white male looking into cars was also something i learned later on through doing it so i didn't realize that but other things that were happening is people come and join me and <laughs> because it was lunchtime the visa counting station was right there and so people would come out every lunch and just cross very the streets with me 
uh, and then to join in. And then some people were really pissed off that I was basically stopping the traffic for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> they realized I was just doing a loop. Um, so a number of different privileges that were happening, you know, you're stopping tons of traffic. And also this um, other part that I learned about that abuse within vehicles, but also I was um, talking about the Church of Cash. I was at, um, for many years of St. Marco from uh, La Jolla, was a good, good friend when I was growing up. He was, he's a reverend in the Church of Cash, and then he ordained me, and I'm a reverend in the Church of Cash, and now he's a saint, um, and he's a great artist, St. Marco, and we surfed together all over Mexico and everything, and um, and I thought, well, what is a church? What are the tools, the clues that you have to be to be part of a religion, and that's like a, a secret language of rituals and tools and things, and if you don't know that language, like your code, then you can't get the dough. You don't go to heaven if you don't know the language okay. yeah. in that cosmology. And then I was looking, thinking about ritual behavior and uh, the tea ceremony, you know, how it takes four hours to get a cup of tea. And I was like, well, maybe, and I've done this all over the world. And that piece was aligned with, I'd made plaques and they said, um, um, in commemoration of the, um, thousands and thousands of people who have lost their lives at automated telling machines around the world. And I epoxy them on bank machines. Okay. And that's mandatory 10, uh, five year prison sentence for uh, post boxes or bank machines. And so I, when I epoxied them on and ran away, I came back later on and they were gone. Of course. So stolen the plaques. And I thought that was another add on. And I was just thinking, I read in the paper that people were getting killed at bank machines. Yeah. And uh, so that, that was kind of the, some of the nutshells of flipping that around, but also the ideation. And then the, I was working while I was getting my master's degree at the uh, dockyard, the federal government. I was working at uh, FMS, the fleet maintenance facility as a Marine industrial laborer. And they used to call them sweepers while I was getting my master's degree and I was working there every day. And I was thinking about, you know, I was most artists, you know, have a day job to make money. Like we both yeah. teach and that gives us an opportunity. That's our day job. And, uh, and then they do on the side creative production. And so I thought, well, I'm flipping sweeping. And so how do you make that endeavor a heroic endeavor? The day job, you know, like your local sandwich artist at, um, uh, Subway, sandwich artist. And I thought, well, you know, you're a working artist, but then you're an artist who's working. And your working is, you know, at Subway or sweeping like I was. So I constructed this giant broom with this huge handle and French signs. And I did the same piece in France during a big event. And then here at the Mall Street Painting. Uh, and, uh, and then the broom became this heroic object. So, oh. so with that, I, I, I'm sort of seeing that not only are you bringing awareness to the task that you're doing, whether it's looking at someone in the car, whether it's the getting of the cash, whether it's the actual sweeping, but you're also bringing attention for other people to look at you as this artist who is working. Yeah. You know, and, and, <clears throat> and having, like you, you mentioned in the, in the moment in the cars when people realized that this wasn't just you walking by and having to glance, but that you're actually engaging with them. Right. I, I'm curious what, what you, how you think that piece would go over today. Uh, the one with the car now that sort of, you know, people are a little bit more on edge when they're in their cars. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's a good point because I have done it. We have done it, you know, myself and my spouse and other people. We said, well, why don't we do this for, you know, half an hour just across <laughs> the street at a place that has no real reason to have across, you know, light. Uh, and it's much different. But then I realized that uh, because of the privilege that I have as being a white male um, in a society that's made and based around people like me, uh, 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 an identified cisgender white male i have the opportunity but when i was in other places i was in the projects in san francisco in lower hate and um, i was noticing people weren't crossing i had to be at a stoplight a stop sign 
and people would they'd go, no, you can go, you can go. And I'm like, no, you go, you have, you're a pedestrian. And they wouldn't cross the street. And I'm mm. thinking to myself, why the hell isn't a person going? It's a stop sign. You have privilege. And they, and then I realized somebody pointed out, but maybe they're scared that I might run them over. Whoa. And that I went, is so something we would not think about. I know. Yeah. I like, <laughs> but I mean, you might oh, be right. And this was this awareness of the stuff often that I do in public uh, wouldn't happen to, you know, I could be put in jail if, if I, if I was like a, per, a, a person of different ethnicity or color, or I was wearing something different. So that made me think maybe I could start messing around with that. And mm -hmm. later on, I started doing more work that was, you know, uh, interrogating that by, you know, a lot of um, people are, um, uh, convinced to go and fight for terrorist organizations around the world. They're uh, coerced, you know, or I, I forget the word, but, and you hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. People are going to ISIS and going to various countries and, and enlisting. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't look anything like the ethnic background of the people there, but they're taken over. And I thought, hmm, maybe I could do something. Well, I, I think Ronnie did other work like that. I mean, it, it's interesting when you do work in public space of of what are the boundaries or are there any? Um, and and as you said, it's different if you are a cisgendered white male who is allowed to take up more space, at least in our society today. Hopefully, that will shift. Uh, but for you to be then becoming aware of it and then using it actually as material. Um, so what, it, what are you discovering through, through working with pieces that are interrogating your position within society? Um, and, you know, public, private, what's public, what's private? Um, you know, those are sort of fundamental. Those are the large issues. But is, is it public for who? Who is it public for? And what happens? You know, I, you know, it's remarkable, but I've done a lot of things in public around the world. And I really haven't had any major where I was like, are you serious? I don't even get pulled into secondary going into New York wearing a thobe and having a Shia beard. I mean, I look completely like I'm, you know, uh, the people that you hear read about and nothing has happened, you know. Um, yeah, so it, it is. And in performance is one of the reasons I do it is uh, people talk and you can think as we all do about an idea of something you want to do. And then you do it. And it turns out to be completely different than you had thought. So you learn things through doing, and you can conceptualize all you want. And you can think, well, this is going to happen if I do this, but you'll never know until you do it. And um, you can do one thing in one place the same way and do it somewhere else. And it becomes completely different. And everybody uh, acts and reacts in a completely different way and, and uh, or just overlooks the situation. So it, it's one of the fascinating things in public, in the spaces and locations. And they're so ripe with uh, potential and excitement. So mm -hmm. those are um, some, of the, some of the excitement about performance art, live performance art. And it's completely different when you videotape it because then it becomes something you'd see, it becomes entertainment. Mm -hmm. I've done a number of works and at the moment it's really vital and alive. And then you see the videotape and you go, yeah, I've seen that on TV. That was on like Honey Boo Boo or mm -hmm. whatever. <clears throat> I've seen some, you know, some humorous thing. But yeah, it's never, it's never the same. There. Yeah. And then even in situations around the world where it's the most blue collar, the most furthest away from a white wall institution you can imagine, people go, if you are as really focused on your intention and you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, they go like, I think that's art. <laughs> and you're like, holy shit, you know, in northern Serbia or something. Yeah. Like, so those are the exciting things that happen within those situations. But to answer your question, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we're we're going to have to move to the next piece uh, in order to allow time for the video and a short discussion. And um, do you want to introduce what we're about to see?
So uh, this next series was, it was kind of, I, I can talk about, I can talk through it as well, mm -hmm. but it was the first time, well, not the first time that a well, A-level gallery, three of them, um, it was based on an exhibition called Beauty Queens and it was about artists who work or do our work on island cultures because I'm on Vancouver Island and they picked two artists from, from um, Ireland, two artists from Hawaii, two artists from Newfoundland, two artists from uh, Vancouver Island uh, to represent island culture. Uh, and it traveled from here, the art gallery of Victoria to, um, to um, Prince Edward Island, uh, which is a confederation center and uh, to Newfoundland, the rooms in art, the art gallery of Labrador in Newfoundland. And uh, they asked me, I was the only performance artist and they asked me what I wanted to do because it's, it's an object. You're supposed to, at the end of the day, you have to have an object mm -hmm. in the exhibition. And with that, they're slated because I respond to the site. So I did research and, and things like that. So uh, island, one of the things I think about island, I, I'm a surfer. I've surfed all my life. I think of surf. And Melinda Moray um, from uh, Kauai uh, did another surf video. But I wanted to respond in the moment to the site that's happening in the site. Mm -hmm. And I can talk through the pieces as they go because the first one I believe you're going to see is... Uh, uh, so there were three series. It was surf and turf, surf and swap, and surf and stay. Mm -hmm. And the first contextual piece that you're going to be seeing was um, I paddled. I had a custom-made 12-foot-1 surf paddleboard made, and I paddled to Crowbush Golf Course in Newfoundland, the third-rated golf course in Canada, which originally was a uh, potato farm because Prince Edward Island is known for PEI potatoes and Anne of Green Gables. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, I won't give it away, but you can watch it. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's play the video of the three surfs. One of the things I was struck by when uh, I went to the uh, Prince Edward Island, this is the first in the series, um, was the beaches were beautiful. Um, and they were very much, and I've been to beaches around the world, it was kind of like Maui. The sand was a different color and it was like a moonscape. So if you get a chance to go to Prince Edward Island, uh, and this is a beautiful, beautiful place, surrounded by sand pretty much. Um, no sir okay but and um really beautiful it's Edward Island um so I was struck by that and I, and I noticed this endless you know um, what we call the blue desert water in the sand and this is a new with the uh, um, golf bag going up to the <clears throat> so a lot of the people that were um, there were golfers and so one of the things that I was thinking about is how do you get sport co-opt uh, indigenous uh, um, places for work, uh, farms. And uh, I did other work in Poland that you know, once again turned into a golf course. And so I started thinking about how sporting activities, specifically golf, takes over people. Now we're on the surf and swap. So this particular piece was in, um, this is on right on this water over here. Uh, and this is um, where I swapped. And this area was a big trade area for the Italian people um, between 
you storm off long trees, and then people come into the harbor and trade from around the world. But I don't know if you come across the water and all this, and they're big communes. Okay, come on, go grab it. No, what they do is dragon boat. And and I was thinking, well, this is colonization and co-opting First Nations. It's like, a heat yeah. cozy. I don't know if it's just cozy. Yeah. Yeah. What a coincidence. Why is it coffee? So I thought, how can I make it perfect like here? Happy. Uh, and you'll see a map. And so basically I left and I traded with people and I had a good on my back. And I just stopped, as you'll see here. And I just said, hey, you want to trade this tea cozy for uh, this? And um, and, now, what and I traded a beer here with Anton at the canoe club. I paddled up and there were people drinking and I just said, hey, uh, how about you trade this sticker uh, we'll for a pint of siren song because we just heard a siren from And then um, I was trading just very odd goods like sex wax, surf wax and things like that. I have to go with your choice. Okay. And uh, this is the second one, and then the final, as you see in the slide, you'll see the, um, the installation of these. Because after each one of these performances, I would edit the video, and then I'd install it in the gallery with the audio, and it would be projected onto the surfboard. So it would be an indexical manifestation of the event. And there's the Inner Harbor of Victoria. And this third one was in um, Newfoundland. And Newfoundland is a beautiful, beautiful country. That was the second action. And uh, if you get a chance to go to any of these places, I definitely would suggest because Newfoundland is, they call it the rock. Uh, beautiful place. And I was thinking everybody says Newfoundlanders, they call them Newfoundlanders, are so indeed, so warm and they'll put you in. I was thinking, well, why don't I uh, bring my surfboard to Newfoundland and paddle? I have all my clothes on my back. I would paddle from bay to bay in Newfoundland, and then I stop and see if I could spend the night at somebody's house because they have a thing called mummy mummers, where you dress up more to see how you work. And then you stay there until they figure you out. And so it just so happens the day that I was doing this, it was a 16 knot wind storm. And it's an exceptional harbor, new land. Nobody that needs to stay at their house. So I think somebody comes out here, they say there's a there's an Airbnb about a kilometer or two down Hi, the road. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I was actually paddling from Bay to Bay. I'm from Victoria, yeah. British Columbia, Canada. So I'm paddling from Bay to Bay. I just was paddling out. The storm is getting pretty heavy. I was thinking maybe I would uh, count on the Newfoundland uh, uh, the hospitality to hopefully somebody will invite me in to stay overnight because it's supposed to die out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so I got fully snubbed. This is the, the place up on the main road to get breakfast up there. Okay, so oh, so okay, so I was uh, I was counting on that. I'll just go up the road here, <laughs> see if uh, somebody else would uh, you know let me stay overnight while the storm dies out, so I can paddle to another bay. Yes, uh, what was your name? Wade. 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 Hi, Wade. I'm John G. Bowman. So I went to about a half a dozen places. They all said no. Oh! And so I think I'm not sure if it was the last part of me paddling back to the next day. So I had to keep going. So I started asking people about it. And I Hello! Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Good. Hi. 
I'm Hope John, I'm from Victoria, British Columbia, and I was paddling from bay to bay. And I got caught in the storm, and I was hoping I could come and encounter on the hospitality of a Newfoundlander. Well, I can't because I'm in a wheelchair. And my husband is sick. Oh. I'm the best. Oh, I'm going to have to fend for myself here yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, And you take the main road right on through. Okay, I'm just on a surfboard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my bed and breakfast is up there. Okay. So meet, meet anyone on the road, just ask them, they'll tell you where bed and breakfast is too. Merry Christmas, happy yeah, holiday. It was December. Yes. Uh, it was December 13th. No snow. It's actually warmer there than it was here. I love it. Now, I, I wonder, um, just action three, we'll wait. Okay. Um, if you weren't a cisgendered white male, whether they have would have invited you in. And, you know, it's, it's like you're, you're doing your own version of come, come from away. Yeah. <laughs> the gander, you know, yes. but, uh, you know, but and, and I found it interesting that you didn't mention you were a performance artist where you did in the other pieces. Uh, but in this case, you don't. And whether that would have changed anything. Um, I mean, I don't think, in uh, the the sweeping piece, I'd mentioned that, but uh, I did in the other ones because that was um, for like uh, uh, much music. Uh -huh. You know, and they like that performance art label. Right. Um, no, uh, I. You know, I don't think it would have made a, a difference, right? Yeah. I went to about a do half a dozen houses, and it was like, what's going on? People didn't even want to know. So at least in those, and those the other ones, there was like no warning. It wasn't like he told anybody, there's just going to be this person coming in that's doing an artwork for the, uh, the, the art gallery, the rooms. Nobody was informed about anything. These were okay. straight interventionists out of the blue, um, what's this guy doing paddling up to the golf course and now wanting to golf? I mean, they just had a golf cart there for me. That's it. Um, so Warren, that's kind of the exciting thing. It wasn't. So yeah. I had no it, idea. It's always lovely though, the conversations that then happen because it's such a surprise, you know, like just with that, that fellow Wade or, or Ray, you know, what he had to say or the woman in the wheelchair those are precious, precious things to capture. And then the stereotypes that you get about the location, like everybody says Newfoundlanders, they're the salt of the earth and they'll take you in uh, because it's such inclement weather, but it, uh, not in the, in this case. Well, they're also suspicious of people that aren't from that area, you know? Completely, that's, that's right. That's a typical so, Eastern thing, right? Um, and so that's the other thing is that when you have with absolutely no research or training or understanding, just the most cursory kind of stereotype, right? Which I, I would imagine, I, mean, I can't speak for everybody, but most people only know what's they've, the, the smallest amount of information unless they're delving into something. And you think, well, I'm just going to be an average person and say, I've heard this about Newfoundland. I'm going to try it out. And then <laughs> you realize, you know, just like everywhere else, it's not the same way. So yeah. I like to also look at it that way and just try not to do a lot of research and a lot of things and see what happens. Right, right, right. And then, uh, you know, you, then you're just like, have no idea. What am I going to do? And it puts you in this situation where you have inherent failure, mm -hmm. where Which things can go horribly wrong. And, then, and that's one of the other things about performance art is when things go horribly wrong, you're like, awesome. If everything goes the way you think it's going to go and it's great, it's like, okay, you throw things in there to make it not do okay. Yeah. Because then you have to be right with it. And you can, in somebody else, you can see them going, what would I do? What do you think they're going to do? And the choices that people make in the world. Um, 
uh, it's really exciting. I wonder if you could speak a little bit about the choice of using the surfboard. I'm thinking back to your, your, you know, your roots in California and, and that, you know, is something that then you've, as you said, you surfed down there as well. Uh, it's sort of, it's something you've taken from before brought up to Canada and then is using it as a tool within your performance work. And that's the other, the other thing, like the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. Ideas are generated from your own past and events that happen in your life. So, you know, at various times in my life, a lot of, I'm, I do sports and I've surfed all my life. So I was thinking that, you know, island surf. Uh, and so it also has a sort of direct aggression sort of aspect. We walk to the door, you knock on the door uh, and you ask for something in which some people could say it's very aggressive, which is... Uh, and that's kind of an inherent sense of a conflict. Uh, and that is a thread going all the way back when I was surfing at a wind and seas known for very, used to be a very localism spot. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of inherent violence and uh, in surfing, mm -hmm. uh, localism, in surfing. A, lot of, a lot of people, you know, this is my spot. It's a limited resource. Uh, there's a wave. The wave is my wave, not your wave. Um, if you're not from here, go away. So it, and this is a picture of me at Win and Sea. Uh, I'm on the top. It's my buddy Jay Carey on the bottom. And and that's what it was. Uh, this was in the local newspaper when I was about 15, 14. Uh, it looks like I'm about to run over those people uh, uh -huh. on that Barry Kanai Pruni right. drop pintail. Um, and there's a lot of localism that happens. And this is kind of the home of, of that uh, Win and Sea where, you know, there was fights on the beach people getting kicked out and all that when i grew up it was like if you're not from here you can't surf here so uh and a lot of other things but wow. and that thread uh was was going in but now i've of course become aware of it but that thread of taking something from your own experience and then embedding it into your work um and sports were the other thing and how are these idiosyncratic nature of sports and this is the map of the piece um surf and swap uh yeah i love i love this just the, the, the following the roots i love this and so on the way too, somebody would be flagging me down and i just paddle up to them you know and say hey you want to trade something and then they would trade something back and i could have kept good doing this like all day i could have paddled around and hey how's it going did you did you at all trade with any indigenous peoples and that's one of the other things. The uh, there was a very it was, um, very important island that the uh, Lekwungen people would put their bodies on, but uh, no, there was not to my knowledge. I mean, okay. I don't want to identify, but there weren't any and, and identifiable. This was done in ninety no two thousand and twelve, uh, wow. two thousand eleven. This whole series took about uh, a year uh, over the course of a year to go from institution to maybe two years, institution to institution. So at each place is a bit different. So it's a little bit, um, but not to my knowledge, because I went to the Inner Harbor, which used to be a very important clamming uh, place and, and buildings would be on there. And they're now, it's like the Empress Hotel. Right. Uh, and so you get to, you know, multi-million dollar yachts pulling up and, you know, I paddle up, hey, let me trade it, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'll trade you for the yacht. So it, it complete colonization. It was completely different than what it was yeah. originally. But um, but it, it stemmed from that idea of these dragon motors co-opting this rowing uh, in front of this land uh, that has, has such significance for the Lekwungen uh, people, uh, right. First Nations here. And that was that, that, that particular paper made me think of that. And what, what, what was the order of those three pieces? Which so and what the year? first one was the first piece was in uh, Charlottetown, uh, Surf and okay. Turf. Uh, surf and Turf. Okay. I in what year? Yeah, that was the first piece. What year? Uh, and that was 2008 or 2010 or something. Okay. Uh, so that was, you know, quite a while ago. But I was still bald, not like the earlier ones. So, <laughs> and then, and then, two thousand and twelve was surf and swap. Uh, surf and swap, and then the fine. No, no. After I was in PI, I went to Newfoundland. The, the same year. 
and that was the same year. I went to Newfoundland in December, uh, and I did that uh, um, surf and stay. Yeah. And then the the procedure is you'd go, you'd be asked to do something. Of course, curators always want to know well, well, how much room space am I getting? You know, how much wall space do you need? And what I did is I had the surf racks that I carried the surfboard on as the wall hanging for the surfboard in right. the gallery. Yeah. And then I had the video projector in the golf bag projecting oh, it onto the surfboard yeah. in letterbox format to highlight the landscape. Yeah. And for each new location I went to, I would project it, you know, I'd edit the video so all three of them were there at the yeah. end. And it became a triptych of the video with the audio of the trading, and it would be on the loop. Yeah. Uh, and so these are these indexical traces that would manifest there but still remain on their own as an art, uh, a, a relic. Or mm -hmm. memory. materials, yeah. Uh, which is, you know, is the uh, one thing about performance is that it's just a moment in time. But, you know, you and there. here they are in the upper yeah. right is the art gallery of um, Greater Victoria. Uh huh. And in the bottom left is the um, the first iteration, which was in uh, Prince Edward Island. It's uh, it's at the the Confederation Center. Okay. Uh, with only you know uh, just the one image, and then the final iteration, the other two pieces are the final one that was purchased by the Confederation Center with all three of the videos on it, projected hanging from the rack. So everything that you use becomes part of the installation. Mm -hmm. So all of the objects and everything become part of the work. And it's very site specific, and it talks about the land that it's on, so people can go. Geez, I know Crowbush Golf Course. I was just there. Didn't that used to be a potato farm? Or they could go like, oh, my God, I go dragon boating there or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it becomes a connection for the people there, but also seeing other places as well. You know, obviously, if you spend time with it, if you go, oh, what's that noise? And then you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's always rich because I really try to locate work in the local context or what's going on now for the people and being aware so you can connect instead of somebody that drops in pop in and then just do a thing right um right. so I and, think then, and then i'm struck by you know when, once we once we take our our materials that we use in a performance and put them in a gallery context especially if it's work that has interactions with people that unless it's written down in some way or a document, that's kind of left off to the side and you're left with the actual physical material. In your case, I, I assume that the videos included those those interactions, like oh. the scene. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, so yeah the whole, well. oh, the whole, all of them, you know, mm -hmm. they were all the full length, very minor editing. So yeah. that's the other thing is you, you so edit stuff out, well. it's not the real event, you know, it's, yeah. right, everything that you like. Uh, yeah. That's hierarchical, you know what I mean? Like in yeah. performance, usually it's the things that are edited out are the best part <laughs> that people, it's not entertaining, right? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, think always... it's, I think it's a lovely, lovely triptych of pieces. Um, we're coming up near the end. We've got sort of a, about 10 minutes left. And so I wanted to make sure that we leave it open for any questions or comments that people may have. Um, I think uh, that will have to be handled in some way from Caron because I'm not seeing anything in my chat of what the questions are. So I'm not quite sure how to, how to manage that, but we do want you to put on Facebook and on the Twitch channel, any comments or questions that you have for John while we have him here. And Caron will make um, a way that that will get to me so well, that I can, I can ask that. So please, please do ask some questions. There are some in the comment. I, I can see from there's private chat and then there's uh, comments. Oh, okay. Pro, where, where are you looking? Because I'm not seeing. So if you look to the, you know, there's things, there's private chat and there's one that says comments. Oh, let me go over to there. Go to comments. There I am. Oh, look I, at that. It's been a bit of time. So here, oh, we got lots of stuff. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stream on through and just see. Uh... 
Jeez, there's a lot here. Yeah. What are some of the reactions of the people when they discover that it is a work of art? And this is at this is at 1039 my time. So you were just starting the surf pieces at that point. Um uh, 10 with 39 uh what what happens no usually i don't say that i try to keep that for the last because people always want to know what's happening and tell me exactly what you're doing and like I try yeah to, but but and, when they themselves discover it like remember with the piece with the yes. dogs and and yes. then you have that wonderful young this is a great piece this is a piece where he's he's doing dances um spontaneous dances with dogs and and there's a young conservative because it's been done in Ottawa who who chats with John about the piece, uh, but he's very, very suspicious of the whole thing. And then you see it where it dawns on him that that actually he's looking at art. And and then you see that moment where he just realizes, oh, I misunderstood. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, so I guess I guess was there a moment at all in the surf pieces where people on their own realized, oh, this is a piece. Well, usually the thing is so flippin' absurd, there was absolutely no other thing that could be. Because mm. like, why would you do that? And there would be other than you know uh, the absurdity of paddling to Beta Bay and just asking people, which I guess people do in kayaks, but you know why would you do those things why you know what i mean uh, that it would have to be art because it really doesn't have anything else why would you paddle to a golf course to golf it's the opposite of golfing because mm -hmm. golf of fetishizing and you know looking good and and you know uh, getting it in the hole so uh and what happens you know there's an awareness like fucking awesome and you're like that is so and hopefully, hopefully later on, they can think about the absurdity of golf uh, and the absurdity of the whole thing that they're doing and the detriment that it has on them, the indigenous culture, the land and everything. Somebody, so, made, somebody made a comment that there's an element of prank in the pieces that, that you've shown. And I think that that connects with the moment where somebody realizes, oh, this is actually somebody's putting me on here. But I, I would like to connect that comment to your use of humor that is in the pieces, whether it's subtle or whether it's overt. Um, oh, for sure. Uh, and that's co-opted by the jackass and all that kind of uh, idea. But I think, be, you know, it's the intentionality of it and the fact that, you know, if somebody were to say, yeah, come on in and stay in my house, I would. Yeah. It's not a prank. It is true. I really want to spend the night at their house during the storm and I would leave the next day. So uh, it, a prank is something like, ooh, 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 and then it would be gone. It's fleeting. It's a fleeting moment that you have a kooky, zany uh, moment. Whereas art, ideally the art you want to make it one that wants to have some legs and some tooth to it. So you can think, hmm, whoa, there's something else going on. And the entrance is through uh, an intervention, maybe humor uh, that intervenes and then, something later on says maybe it's more than just a fleeting right maybe it's a there's a micro you know much larger yeah thing going on there's there's quite a bit of a chat uh especially with ika of um about that your pieces especially the one about surf and stay is highlighting inequality in terms of they were thinking if they were a woman doing that, would they be invited in as opposed to a man? Um, so I think that's, that it takes us back to the earlier part about bringing awareness or, or highlighting uh, the fact that you are cisgendered and, and what are the reactions to that, whether it's the car piece or, or in the case of surf and turf or surf and stay. Um, well, I think, I mean, that's inherently, you know, I, it's not like I can change that, you know, uh, I, you know, you have no idea, uh, what's going to happen at any given moment when you go into the public Yeah, and, uh, um, the location has a lot to do with it, you know, uh, um, but whether it's a man or a woman or somebody identifies, I think that's the role of the artist to know, at least in performance for sure, to know how they identify in the world to know the tool that they're working with 
and, yeah. and then using that tool to talk about the, the thing that you're talking about or to do the thing you want to do. Right. And I can't really deny because that would be acting if I were to pretend like I was somebody other than I am. And that wouldn't be performance to me. Right. So I have to know how I navigate the world. Um, um, just one last very short answer for this one, because then I do have to do the, um, the promo for next week. But this is a very interesting comment. Invasive approaches, invasive approaches have meaning in your work, John. You mentioned you stand on the threshold of public and private. A way to work out the physical and the sensorial. There's a question mark there. I wonder how this has changed through the years. How has COVID influenced public responses? Um, well, you know, the COVIDius is, uh, is one, but I've done other work with other pandemics that have happened because uh, there was the, the, um, the avian flu. There was the pig virus and I was doing something in Madrid because everybody was washing and scrubbing all the time. I was doing, I was really wanting to be topical with that. But the this, this serious lockdown made me, you know, try to use the camera like we're doing now as a tool, as a medium, but also the highlighting, you know, touching and the sensorial that I think uh, I think they're talking about and how the touch of the body and the touch of things has mm -hmm. highlighted more awareness of germs when people put their hands like that and grab the knob uh, and then proximity with one another. Uh, you no, know, for completely, it's it's completely aware, and, and often I interrogate those things, and mm -hmm. our own awareness of our breath. Uh, um, but you know, like with with the surf and stay, we couldn't really ask to stay at somebody's house now. You know that that's because of COVID. That 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 sort of is a boundary mm -hmm. that's that's there, unless you know, you're really invited in. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you can uh, don't ask, don't get. Don't tell. <laughs> don't ask, don't get. So you know what I mean? For sure you can ask and other people have different uh, uh, proximate, you know, some people, yeah, no problem. You know, I've got a shed in the back and go stay there. And I was, that's what I was waiting for. Somebody said, you right. can't stay here, but we got a shed with hay in the back. You can go right. stay here. And I'm like, sure, but nothing. Uh, for sure, how does the COVID is for sure? There are also other tools or things to interrogate mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is those things. If you're aware and alert and that's our job. Mm -hmm. to be alert and aware of these things and how can we try something with it well we're gonna we're gonna end there i want to thank you john very much it's been a, been a delightful conversation with you and nice to be able to dive into into some of this work and uh and i want to thank everybody who's been with us uh and all your comments and your questions for john really appreciate that um next week we are going to have on artist focus uh we're delighted to be in conversation with the soup uh to came to camp oh, oh i'm having problems here sorry the soup the soup to there we are he's from toronto canada and he's also from tokyo japan uh, and uh, that's going to be great. Love the soup. Um, please note that because of daylight savings are happening in the UK and the Europe and Europe tomorrow, this program will be an hour earlier for everyone in Europe and the UK. This is just for next week. Um, this is only the case for this one program, and daylight savings falls back an hour in the US on and Canada on November 6th. So there's just that one, one week of next Saturday where uh, in Europe and the UK, you're just going to be an hour earlier and then we'll all be on the same time zone the following week. But each week we will stick to the 11.15 a.m. Chicago time. So anytime you want to just take a look, uh, just Google Chicago time and then you'll see sort of the time difference for, for where you are at that point. Um, but I want to thank again, John, John G. Bobay for being with us and being able to go into, into a bit of his work. And, uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thanks, right. Bo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank you. And for those that are going to be watching the archive of the video, please add your comments and questions in there. That would be great. John will be checking that, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, that we can always address things there as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all the support, John. Thanks.